when the recession hit in the 80s, Rockford was one of the um, worst hit cities in the country. And unfortunately, we haven't bounced back from that. The community really viewed Rockford Public Schools as a place you didn't want to be. We had very high turnover in superintendents for decades. We also are famous for the two school board members punching each other during a meeting. As a board member, I actually had to FOIA to get information because the superintendent wasn't sharing. Well, not a lot of collaboration, not a lot of conversation. People were afraid for their jobs, and admin was afraid for their jobs too. The, the tone of the bargaining was set at the very first meeting. The attorney gets up and says, uh, teachers, it's time to do more with less. Everything that we've worked for for 25 years, they wanted to take it back. And I knew at that point that we were probably going to go down the road of a strike. The Rockford Education Association voted overwhelmingly to strike today after negotiations between the district and the union failed to settle a contract over the weekend. It was an awful thing. It's, I hope, no, hope we never have to do it again. Dr. Jarrett became superintendent July 1st, 2013. Moving to a district with 47 schools and nearly 5,000 employees taught me some pretty valuable lessons. You can't get to know 5,000 people. So having a strong relationship with our union partners and building a strong team in our district office with support of the board and strong community partnerships was essential. And frankly, uh, I didn't know how to do that. So we turned to CEC, the Consortium for Educational Change. We were invited to lead out a strategic planning process. It became clear that before we got into doing a strategic plan, we really needed to get stakeholder voice into the process. A little intimidating, but then everyone was very friendly. Everyone was open to discussion, and um, everybody was able to really voice their opinions. You know, I thought it was a good process. I thought we had just the right amount of uh, engagement, the right balance. We take the draft of the plan back to all of the stakeholders and we produce a final draft that the superintendent takes to the board for approval. Every time I see the colorful sign for the strategic plan, I like to say, hey, I was a part of that. This is a strategic plan that we feel is going to be a living, breathing document, not something that's going to go on the shelf. So what you had was everything from the classroom to the PLC to the school to the district and even the school board and the strategic plan, all using a common vocabulary. So here we were making progress on collaborative work, but it was time to bargain a contract again. I remember vividly being really, really concerned that we had built these new relationships with union leadership and that it was all going to fall apart as we crawled into our own corners. And so I called Joe Anderson and I said, Joe, I've heard about this interest-based bargaining, but it doesn't seem possible to me that we could be ready to take on something like that. We just came off a strike. He said, the fact that you want to do interest-based bargaining is a big part of that. And as long as the REA is interested, we're going to find a way to put you together. And at first I was like, oh, I don't think That's not going to work in this district. It's not going to work. But then as we started having more conversations with the superintendent and started having more successes, we decided, okay, let's give this thing a shot. Interest-based bargaining built upon the concepts we were already starting to use with CEC coaching. And instead of coming in with a position, you tell your story about the issue. Both parties were looking for how do we ensure that we don't end up in that kind of conflict again this time. And so they were really committed. The team came to an understanding that there was so much work to be done uh, that we have met on holidays, we met on uh, Super Bowl Sunday, uh, we met during a blizzard. Not only did we get a contract settled on time, we actually strengthened our relationship during the process. When they settled their contract, they agreed to have a number of work groups continue to work for the next two years to solve difficult negotiations topics. And those committees will make recommendations right. to the next bargaining team. We're starting to build the capacity to have those interest-based conversations at the committee level and ultimately even at the building level. They have seen a shift in uh, the morale internally and the community's belief 
that the school district is a good place for your children to receive an education. As of last year, we closed the gap on the graduation rate between um, whites, African Americans, and Latinos. I attribute the good things that are going on to the change of culture. Teachers feel respected in their classroom. Instead of being scared about who is going to do something to them, they now feel the power and the opportunity to be able to do something for their kids. The most important part of our work at this stage is making sure that it goes beyond any one individual. Where something isn't working right, it's part of our union identity that we need to be part of improving it.